Okay, I already started this one. Okay, loop antennas. Okay, before that, uh, we have seen the current distributions in thin wire antennas. Okay, based on the frequency of the electromagnetic signals. Okay. The current distribution is like this based on the wavelength. If lambda by two is there, for every lambda by two, there is a the the, the current distribution will become zero. Okay, here you can see clearly. If the antenna size is lambda, means here it is lambda by two, and this is lambda by two. Here, see the current distribution is here zero. Similarly, five lambda by four also. Okay, here this is here it is up to here it is lambda by two, up to here is lambda by two. It is Zero. We are getting this type of current distributions. Suppose if it is a two lambda, okay. If the uh, the length of this antenna is two lambda, the current distribution is like this. Okay, up to here it is lambda by two. Here is lambda by two, and this is lambda by two and lambda by two. Okay. Um, you can see the current distributions in thin wire antennas of different different lengths. Okay. You can see this. in thin uh, uh, wire antennas one important constraint is the, the the diameter of the conductor it should be always less than lambda by 100 for thin wire antennas you have to remember uh, that thing. okay now we will discuss about the loop antennas okay uh, normally these loop antennas are used as a receiving antennas okay in most of the um, electromagnetic uh, uh, communication okay in communication these antennas are used as a receiving antennas most of them transmission purpose also they are used uh, these antennas are also used in rfids okay now last class we have seen okay in loop antennas a single wire is uh, uh, it is uh, it has a, a shape okay the coil it, it has a radiating coil of any shape with one or more turns carrying the current Okay, we can see the different uh, shapes of the loop antennas: square loop antenna, circular loop antenna, rectangular loop. Okay, rhombic loop. Or uh, this is a triangular loop antennas. Different shapes are there. And also, we have seen the applications of these loop antennas. Majorly, they are using as a receiving antennas. Okay, uh, they are using in aircrafts for direction findings, and also in radio receivers for receiving high frequency waves. Uh, this ultra high frequency transmitters also okay we'll use this loop antennas and in rfid devices okay, radio frequency identification devices also these antennas are used rfid nowadays we are talking about rfid tags okay uh, there also this loop antennas are uh, used <coughs> okay this uh, normally this loop antenna is uh, formed using a ferrite core okay uh, using this, uh, this small, this uh, loop antennas are broadly classified in two types. One is small loop antenna and large loop antenna. Okay, <clears throat> based on the circumference of this loop, if the circumference of the loop is less than lambda by ten, the type of antennas they are called small loop antennas. Okay, if greater than lambda by ten, are we are approximately the circumference of the the circumference of the loop antenna. Is approximately is equal to lambda. The type of antennas they are called uh, large loop antennas. Okay, in our uh, theoretical, uh, in our uh, study purpose, we are we are studying the small loop antennas in our course. Okay, <clears throat> and also we have seen. Suppose if we have we are having a circular loop antenna and this is a, a square, this is a square loop antenna. If the area of this circle and the square they are similar. Okay, then they are having the uh, same uh, uh, radiation pattern. Okay, they are having the same radiation pattern. Here, let us say this R is the radius of this uh, circular antenna, and 2R. 2R means this is the diameter. If the diameter is approximately equal to the uh, side of this square, okay, we can say that then these two antennas are having the same uh, radiation pattern. Okay. In our last class, we have seen here for a small loop antenna, the radius is or is less than, very much less than the wavelength of the electromagnetic signal. Okay. 
suppose if here we are seeing a current carrying uh, this is a circular loop and this is a square loop the area of the circular loop is a1 is equal to pi r square and the, this is the square loop the area is equal to d square in our last class we have seen that if a1 the area of the circle is equal to the area of the square then these uh, <coughs> loop antennas they are having a similar radiation pattern okay one of the disadvantage of this uh, circle, so this loop antennas is uh, <coughs> the radiation efficiency of this loop antennas are uh, low compared to dipole antenna and other antennas okay now <coughs> we'll consider a circular loop okay actually it is a circular loop and the dimensions of the, the loop is d such that uh, we are assuming a for our uh, um, derivation purpose okay we are assuming a square loop is located at the center of the coordinate system the side of the square loop is d okay this d is this d is equal to the diameter of the circular loop okay let us see here here we are assuming a square loop here okay if the current is passing in this loop see this is the direction of current passing through this loop okay we will give the uh, will feed the the circular loop with the electromagnetic uh, electric signal here okay then the current will pass uh, in this direction okay in this loop antenna okay we'll see later okay we we'll see that this loop antenna also the electromagnetic wave is traveling in the r direction okay the electromagnetic radiation coming from this uh, square loop is in r direction that is the the wave propagates in r direction and magnetic field here if you have to uh, see the difference earlier it is h by now for a circular loop okay we'll see later it has a magnetic field has theta component and electric field has phi component why because it's a circular loop we'll uh, see in our later uh, later sli slides um, one more uh, thing is here we are assuming that this circular loop is having two dipoles okay uh, for our understanding purpose the circular loop is see here 1 2 3 4 right this is the four sides of the square here we are assuming that it has a uh, two dipoles or two short dipoles okay one is 1 4 and other one is 2 3 okay we already seen that it is a it is a small circular loop means the circumference is very much less than lambda by 10 okay we are considering this side of this uh, square loop 1 4 and 2 3 they are two short dipoles we will consider these are the two short dipoles and we will try to okay uh, find out the the vector potential or the the fields the fields magnetic fields and electric field intensity at a observation point locating uh, distance r from the uh, this uh, reference reference point okay okay here we have to uh, we have to understand that for this circular loop sorry square loop okay it is having two short dipoles one four is one short dipole and two three is another short dipole okay we we'll see Uh, here the far field of square loop will have electric field component e phi and magnetic field component h theta okay to obtain the field pattern we are considering two short dipoles 1 4 and 2 3 1 4 is one short dipole and 2 3 is another short dipole the radiation pattern of two short dipoles in horizontal x y and and vertical uh, y z direction is given below here this is the radiation pattern okay the radiation pattern is like donut shape okay if you cut in a horizontal plane okay we are having this type of shape if you see in the vertical okay in b plane okay it is like a uh, uh, it is like a uh, you can say it's a donut donut type of shape okay we, i will see that practically how it look uh, whenever it is required okay this is the radiation pattern uh, here Uh, for our derivation uh, part okay here the dipoles in yz plane are shown below yz plane yz plane means see here this is the yz 
y z plane okay if you see in this y z plane okay these two dipoles are looking like this as a, a two points this is one short dipole and here it is another short dipole okay clearly you can see that okay if the electromagnetic waves that is coming from uh, this dipole okay suppose if you want to reach reach at this observation point okay compared to this dipole the electromagnetic radiation coming from this dipole they have to travel a more distance this distance is called the the path difference you can say this is the path difference what is the path difference here lm is the path difference lm is the path difference and here we can see that this is the polar angle theta okay here this is 90 degrees now it will become 90 minus theta okay we can easily calculate this lm what is the lm okay lm is equal to okay in terms of d you can say this is a d by 2 okay therefore okay the path difference lm okay the path difference lm is d cos 90 minus theta okay this is the, the, the lm is equal to d cos 90 minus theta you can see okay this is d cos 90 minus theta okay here the the total electric field intensity at this observation point p it is nothing but okay it is nothing but the electric field intensity due to this short dipole plus the electric field intensity due to this short dipole at n okay that's why we can write the electric field component the electric field uh, the, the total electric field intensity is equal to the field component due to the dipole 1, 4 and the field component due to the dipole 2, 3. Okay. From the figure, it is clear that the wave radiated from the dipole will take more time. Okay. That is the path difference I have said. The path difference is LM. Okay. Here, the mathematically, the path difference is D cos 90 minus theta. D cos 90 minus theta. Is it right or wrong? d cos 90 minus theta okay this is the uh, this, this you have to measure here okay here this is the distance between these two tables is d okay the path difference is d cos 90 minus theta that path difference you can we can represent in terms of wavelength the path difference is equal to d by lambda cos 90 minus theta okay here we are representing the phase angle okay it is denoted by psi and the relationship between the phase angle and the path difference okay this equal to 2 pi times of the path difference is called the phase angle okay 2 pi times of the path difference therefore psi is equal to okay 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda into here psi cos 90 minus theta is equal to sin theta right sin theta therefore this equal to 2 pi into d sin theta by lambda d sin theta by lambda we already know that 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda is nothing but the phase shift constant or phase constant therefore the phase angle uh, psi is equal to you can write therefore the phase angle psi is equal to Therefore, the phase angle psi is equal to, okay, you can write this as the beta times of beta times of d, beta times of d sin theta, you can write like this also. Okay, you can write like this. psi is equal to uh, beta d times of sin theta okay now now in general the field component of any dipole okay dipole any dipole uh, any short dipole is given by the field component normally this is electric field component is equal to 
magnitude magnitude of that electric field intensity multiplied by e power j phase angle this is the general representation of a the electric field component of any dipole dipole antenna okay therefore the field component due to the dipole we have we are having two dipoles okay in one dipole the current is passing in see here the current is passing in this direction here the current is passing in this direction that's why we can write this uh, the current of electric field component of this uh, dipoles one four suppose if one four is representing as e of theta one this is that is equal to minus e naught e power j psi by two this is the psi by two is the phase angle okay Sim similarly the field component due to the dipole two three this is opposite to uh, this one four that's why we are considering it as e of theta comma two is equal to e naught e power minus j psi by two this is the phase difference between these two dipoles are there okay that's why we are representing the electric field component due to the uh, due to the short dipole 14 and the another short dipole 23 is in this in this manner here e not is the okay here e not is the magnitude of this electric the magnitude of the electric field component of this short dipole okay individual individual dipole both are uh, we are considering as a uh, simple short dipoles. That's why E naught is same for these two dipoles. Therefore, the total electric field intensity, you can write the total field radiated to the square loop. You can say E phi is equal to E of theta 1 plus E of theta 2. Okay. In this way, for a, for a, circle, for a loop antenna, okay, we will calculate the uh, electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity now substitute here e of theta 1 and e of theta 2 we are getting this way therefore e of phi the total radiated electric uh, field intensity that is equal to see here e power j theta minus e power minus j theta divided by 2j is equal to sin theta therefore you can write this as a 2j times of sin psi by 2 here theta is the psi by 2 that's why the total electric field intensity that is equal to minus 2j e naught sine psi by 2 and also we know that the the phase angle psi is equal to beta d sine theta what is this beta beta is the phase shift constant this is equal to 2 pi by lambda okay now substitute here this psi value in this above equation okay we will get psi e psi is equal to minus 2j e naught sine bd sin theta divided by 2 okay now we are having the electric field intensity in phi direction okay now you can easily calculate the magnetic field intensity also okay how to calculate the magnetic field intensity here the magnetic field intensity is having in the direction of theta therefore the intrinsic impedance equal to e phi divided by h, h, h theta Therefore, h theta equal to e phi divided by eta naught. Okay, you can see simply you can substitute here. H theta is equal to minus 2j e naught by eta naught. That is my that is nothing but 120 pi into sine bd sine theta divided by 2. This is our magnetic field intensity in theta direction. Okay. Here we are not doing anything, we are just simply substituting the equations. We know that the magnitude of the individual field components, okay, in a short dipole antenna, earlier we have discussed, we have, we have derived the expression, okay, for the magnitude of the individual field component is equal to, okay, J60 pi I into L sin 90 degrees divided by R lambda. Okay, this is the magnitude of the short dipole antenna. Okay, therefore, E naught is the magnetic field due to dipoles 1 and 3. You can write E naught is equal to sin 90 degrees. Okay, here uh, 90, sin 90 is equal to 1. Therefore, J 60 pi I into L divided by R into lambda. This is the magnitude of the electric field component. You have to remember this one. Now, substitute this electric field, the magnitude of this uh, electric field uh, intensity in the above equation. Okay, now we are getting. Uh, okay, before that, okay, before uh, substituting that, 
one one assumption one assumption is here okay <clears throat> In ten minutes, this session will close. Please try to rejoin. Okay, here the length of the the square loop, the length of the uh, square square loop, or the side of the square loop is very less compared to the wavelength. Okay, here uh, uh, in trigonometric properties, okay, we are assuming that sine BD sine theta divided by two is approximately equal to BD sine theta divided by two. Okay, uh, this assumption we have to. Uh, substitute in the above equations therefore the electric field component okay of the substitution of this in the above equation okay you will get okay in place of sin bd sin theta divided by 2 will we are we are representing we are right we are writing the bd sin theta by 2 okay now this is the expression for the electric field intensity in pi direction okay after simplification Okay, after simplification, we are getting. You see here, uh, these two and these two will get cancelled. Now sixty BD BD the sixty into pi IL sine theta divided by R into lambda. Again, substitute beta beta the phase constant, phase shift constant equal to two pi by lambda. Uh, further, you can simplify this one. Further, you are getting one twenty pi square IL with the sin theta divided by r lambda square see here here len l into d l into d is nothing but the square of the loop l is the length of the short dipole l is the length of the short dipole length of the short dipole also d okay that's why l into d is called the area of the square therefore you can replace in this above equation l into d is equal to a is equal to 120 pi square i a sin theta divided by r lambda square okay this is electric field intensity the units for electric field intensity is volts per meter here i is the retarded current and a is the area of the square loop similarly for the magnetic field intensity the h, h theta component can be obtained by substituting this equation here now h theta is equal to this uh, e theta e phi is simply uh, def, uh, divide with the eta naught that is 125 we are getting this is the expression for x phi okay here we have calculated the electric field intensity and the magnetic field intensity then we can able to calculate the radiation resistance okay here also very simple derivation uh, few up few assumptions are there you have to understand those assumptions then you can easily uh, you can easily calculate the electric fields, electric field, um, electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity. Dear students, you have any doubt here? If you don't have any doubt, I will uh, proceed further to calculate the radiation resistance of this loop antenna. Okay, please uh, try to note down in your notebooks all these procedures. If anything is, uh, if you are not understand, okay, please bring to my notice. I will clarify. The doubts in our next class okay now now i want to start with another uh, topic that is the radiation resistance of loop antenna okay here this is the radiation resistance of loop antenna okay Radiation resistance of loop antenna. How to get a similar same procedure? How to calculate the radiation resistance of uh, any antenna? First, you will calculate the total power. In total power, we will substitute the, the maximum current equal maximum current in terms of uh, RMS current. Okay, then uh, we can easily you can calculate the radiation resistance. See the total radiated power is given by i square rms into rrad this is the radiation resistance okay for that purpose you have to calculate the total radiated power okay for that first of all we will calculate the average power what is the average power okay, here modulus is there magnitude you have to take uh, average power is equal to
okay here the average power is equal to half the magnitude of e theta h phi this is equal to you can write in terms of e theta r, e, e phi r h theta okay this is the main difference you have to understand in the loop antenna compared to the dipole antenna in dipole antenna we are having h phi component and electric field as e theta component but here loop antenna okay we are having uh, h magnitude has magnitude uh, magnetic field is having theta component and electric field is having phi component okay now substitute here the average power is equal to 1 by 2 eta naught into h theta square h theta i we already know the magnitude of this h theta is equal to phi i a sin theta divided by r lambda square okay now substitute in this equation we are getting the average power is like this okay substitute here you multiply with eta naught substitute eta naught is equal to 125 divide by 2 this will become 60 now we are having pi term here it's a pi square term pi into pi pi power 3 pi cube term will get i square a square sin square theta divided by r square lambda power 4 okay now from this p average we'll calculate the total radiated power okay now last class we have seen how to calculate the total radiated power this is the same thing okay you have to remember uh, this expression for total radiated power in terms of the average power okay that is equal to we are integrating this average power okay, this is the average uh, the power flow per unit area okay if you want to have to calculate the total you have to integrate with respect to the differential surface area therefore this uh, total credited power is equal to you can substitute theta theta varies from 0 to pi and pi varies from 0 to 2 pi in this above equation we all know the ds value ds equal to r square sin theta d theta d phi okay uh, here you have to integrate with respect to d phi and d, d theta we don't have any d phi terms that's why i am writing uh, integration of d phi as 2 pi and uh, remaining all the terms we are having theta terms the so sin theta square is sin theta here sin cube theta into d theta okay in our last uh, few classes okay we have seen the integration of sin cube theta and d theta okay we have calculated okay there we find out the value is 4 by 3 just i am uh, simply i am substituting the value here okay remaining all are uh, similar okay from this we multiply with respect to 3 what is this we are getting it is uh, Okay, here uh, 16. Okay, uh, here we are getting 160. Okay, three, uh, three fours are 40. 40 into 4 is equal to 160. Now I am taking the 16 inside 2 pi by lambda whole power 4. Okay, 2 pi by lambda beta actually. Lambda by 4. See here, uh, pi power 4 is there. Here as lambda, lambda power 4 is there. That's why I am writing 2 power 4 means 16. 16 tens are. 160 this is 160 actually to multiply this therefore the total radiated power is uh, you can write it as a 10 into 6 this actually this is 16 pi power 4 by lambda by 4 i square k square okay now okay now substitute uh, the first equation and this equation okay what is the first equation the total radiated power is equal to in terms of irm square into irad is equal to now what just uh, now we have computed this power and substitute here okay we are getting this equation if you simplify this one here this i is the maximum current i is the maximum current therefore the maximum current how, how can you represent the maximum current in terms of rms rms equal to okay root two times of im or IRMS equal to IRMS equal to IM by you can write IM by root 2. Okay, so after substituting here, this IM square and this IM will get cancelled. Now RRAD is equal to 20 times of 20 pi by lambda whole power 4 k yes, square. This you have to remember this one. This is for a the radiation resistance for a single single loop. Okay, whether it is a, a circular or square loop, single loop. If suppose if it is having multiple loops, okay, uh, this and this uh, thing you can further you can simplify. 